Hello and welcome to Sweetie Central. Okay, so I am getting ready for chicks and I figured I should share this, um, what I do. So um, we are only getting five chicks to start next Monday um, and I'll be coming back from a trip so I need to have the cage ready. Um, but then the process continues where like two weeks later we are going to be playing with the dog. Um, two weeks later we're going to be getting the hatching chicks will hatch, the hatching chicks will hatch, and then we're going to be getting four more chicks. So we'll see. But this is what I do to the cage. I actually have a, a smaller cage, and I'm probably going to do this too instead, and save this for when this cage right here that I'm about to show you. So this is the larger of the cage. I'm going to save this one for when the hatching chicks hatch, because that could be up to ten chicks. Um, I'm only getting five, so I'll use a smaller cage. In comparison, this is my Rottweiler's cage. So that's a very big cage, and this one, this is, she can fit in here. She can walk and move around, that's about it. She wouldn't want to lay down. It's, it's not super small, but it's not super big. So this is what I'm doing. I'm lining it with boxes. I actually laid across the bottom um, press and seal to help protect it, because it's a metal one. This is an old cage. I had this cage when I was little. So I'm um, pressing seals along the bottom just to help keep that metal um, from turning or getting wet in any way. The box is to, so the chicks don't jump out and to keep the bedding inside as well. So I took um, a regular Amazon box. I actually cut it in half. It was of a certain size. You have to measure your, your not measure, but finagle and play with um, the boxes you have in your cage size. There's another box that literally we just took it apart. And then, um, I think I just have to cut the flap right there. And this is gonna cover the bottom. And voila, it is done. Now, it's not gonna stay like that. The first three days or so, I put um, a dog pee pad. The first three days or so, I put a dog pee pad on the bottom, as such. Um, and then, I will show you when I go get it. Um, the heater and the feeder and the water and all that jazz. All right, so I'm still getting everything together, but I have two um, heaters or brooders, as you could call them. I don't use heat lamps; um, they're not. I don't feel they're safe. Um, but these guys are pretty awesome. So I have a smaller one here. The legs actually adjust in height. So right now it's not even at its low its height pretty low. I actually will make it lower when I have the chicks, but you just slide, push this, and the legs, I can't do this one hand, but <laughs> you slide and there you go. They like slide up and down, so now that one's taller, so it wobbles. Um, you can like adjust the legs to height, and you usually want it lower when they're little, when you first get them, um, because they want to be as close to the heat as possible, like mama chicken, which their body temperature is really warm, 110, something like that. Um, and then you just make it higher, or you can even have it tilted, depending. Um, you can have like the low, like the back part lower and the other top higher, because the chicks will go where they're comfortable. And then I have this really big one. Um, the smaller one is from Renda Coop. Um, they both cost about the same. I got this one at Tractor Supply. You can get it online. It's Producer's Pride. I got this one online on Amazon. So, um, this one has legs in the side, so you see, again, right now it's as low as one, but I can raise the front ones up and make it tilt as well. Um, and then it also has the three levels, so it can get as high as it needs to be for them. This one actually has um, a temperature, kind of, so it goes from brooder to heater. Um, I don't give my chickens outside any heat, but some people do, and so they put this on it. It has two other sets of legs I don't have with me right now. And you can stand it up, so it stands up like this, and then the heat radiates and the chickens hang out next to it. I don't know. I'm not doing that. But that's what that can do. Now, what is this plastic on top? Well, this is press and seal, because if you didn't know, chickens poop a lot, and baby chicks poop just as much. So and they will stand on everything. And when they stand on these and poop on these, it's just annoying. <laughs> um, because they're warm, it's not the easiest thing to clean. So with the, this, it's, this makes it a little easier to clean um, when they've pooped all over and I just kind of can wipe it off with a wet paper towel. But when it's warm and you wipe it off with a wet paper towel, the regular um, material, it like smears it and then it's just gross. <laughs> so it's press and seal, which is heat resistant, so it's fine um, to the heat. And 
those are my setups and this one is gonna go um, into the cage in that corner right there and I still have to get the waterers ready and the food feeders ready and then the cage that this one's gonna go in which is a little smaller than that cage um, yep yeah, I still have to get that ready so probably not tonight thanks Aren't they cute? So, we got the chicks about on Monday, and today is Thursday, so four days ago. Um, and yeah, I forgot that I was trying to finish this video. Um, on the bottom of their cage, you may see along the outside edge, you'll see uh, pee pads. So, doggy pee pads. That's what they were on for the first three days. Just the doggy pee pad. I actually just added um, the hemp. So, this is hemp. Um, just little granules of hemp. It's all, all Dubai, all by um, chick hemp. And I actually use this in my coop outside. Um, and it's great, it's super absorbent. He's trying to duck bath in it. Oh, it's so cute. Or she, better be a she. Hopefully these are all girls. Uh, the three black ones are Cooper Morans, or Cuckoo Morans. The darkest gray one is a blue star which is a half blue andalusian and half bard rock we have a currently we have a blue andalusian outside so um, they will look very similar but our blue andalusian lays white eggs and this one will lay brown eggs the two uh, yellowish ones and the lightish gray one they're all easter eggers so they will lay um bluish to green eggs um yeah, bluish eggs. So I am gonna go get, they have a little, I have a stand that I can put in here for them. These are the ones that are staying at our house. They're so cute, oh my gosh, they're adorable. Um, we need to handle them a lot more, but our dog, uh, not not this one, this is Pinchy. You've probably never really seen her. She thinks they're her babies and she's gotta protect them, but the bigger dog thinks they're toys. And well, yeah, we don't need that. So um, their heat plate is right here. I actually just stood it up to add the hemp so I'm gonna place it back down like I said see all that poop that's why I put the plastic on it um, and they go under there you sometimes you have to show them how to get under there and that's where the heat is and they go um, our water is freaking awesome it's they just it's great they can reach it I can actually make it higher as they get bigger they'll be in this cage for about six weeks maybe less depending on the weather um, and if I can get them outside, I'm gonna actually take them out uh, when it's really nice out and they get more feathered because they're puffy. They just don't have their full feathers yet to help keep them warm. But they already know how to dust bath. That's so freaking cute. Um, but I'll take them out uh, when they're about four weeks old. Yeah, three to four weeks old. It's a peck in the grass. I have a uh, thing that I use for them to peck in the grass. And they'll peck in the grass and I'll also let the big chickens see them um, without being able to get to them. Um, so their feed right now is being fermented. I get my feed from a local farm. She mills it herself. So it looks like this. It's just, it's very, it's finely milled. I only have one hand right now. I'm not using proper. So it's finely milled. And what I do is I put it in a jar. And I'm actually gonna use that bucket once I get a little bit more out of it. But I put it in a jar. So I think this was about two thirds full of dry feed, like up to here. And then I filled it with water. I let it soak in. I fill it with water again, maybe up to about here. Um, so it covered the it covered it by like an inch, and then it sits for um, about three days. So this is done. I gave them some this morning. I'll give them some tomorrow. Um, and then you kind of just do it in the sink. You just make a couple at a time. So I'm going to take something out of the bucket and actually use that bucket. Since the bigger they get, the more they will eat. And usually every morning I fill it up. Um, so, look at them cuties, oh my goodness. Yeah. And if you didn't see the other video, we actually have 11 eggs and they all look to have embryos growing in them. One that we can't definitely tell is because it's an olive egger, one of my olive egger girls outside. And it's really dark green and you just can't see in the shell. Like the white doesn't penetrate at all because it's so thick. Um, so we won't know until we know if that one actually was fertilized and if it actually has an embryo growing in it. So I'm gonna take you over and show you the other four chicks for school. 
So all the chickens have animal watchers. This is Thunder. Thunder is just chilling. I have not put the hemp in their cage yet. So this is after three days of messiness. These guys are escape artists. Um, there are four. There's only two up top right now. I don't know, I guess they're too hot. We had to create our own little skirt around that heater because it doesn't get as hot, the brooder, it doesn't get as hot as the other brooder I have over there. And it just didn't feel warm enough for them. So I put the little skirt, help keep heated. Um, their food. Now these guys, that blue one, is like the other one in the other cage, a blue star. And the brown one, there's three brown ones, the other two are underneath, there's a head poke out if you can see it. They are Wells Bar. So the Cuckoo Marianne's and the Wells Bar all lay dark brown eggs. But these guys are for school. I'll take them to school next week. They have a cage there similar, but way bigger. If you want chickens, what do you need? Um, something to hold them in. We use, a, we use dog cages and we um, make walls about a foot and a half up because they can escape the dog cages. Um, that actually happened with the other group over there twice. Um, and you need a water. I like the water that's in this um, cage with the red, the red one much better than the blue one that's in the other cage. Um, the other cage is just uh, a regular circle water or they can it, when I start putting the hemp in they'll start filling it with hemp it'll just they'll just kick it in um, with this red one they can't kick the hemp in and that, I like that a lot more um, and then a feeder right now they're using a dish uh, because that's all I had and then um, the girls here have a regular small feeder dish these things cost like four bucks at um like tractor supplier you can buy them on Amazon online uh, so and you can pick different colors I like blue they didn't have a blue water or I would have bought it. Um, you need something to keep them warm. People use heat lamps. I don't. I don't feel they're very safe. Although in my greenhouse I have reptile lamps which have no light. It's just a ceramic bulb which you could probably use that for them too but they um, you could just probably use that for them too but I like the brooders because it's even heat. Um, it's a plate. They have something to stand on when um, they want to stand on stuff. Um, and they will quickly, the, the size will move up. So by next week, I'll probably have it at least angled, if not up to the second level. Um, and then you'll start to notice they're, they won't sleep under it anymore. They'll be too hot. They'll have their feathers and they won't want it to. So then um, you just kind of put it all the way up to the top or angle it, or I can even stand the black one up on its end if I need to. But I will actually get sticks from outside and give them some sticks. Um, I have a chick one that I'm gonna put in here tonight. I will post that at the end. But I'm gonna put a chick one in here tonight. They're still duck bass and they're so cute. Um, and it just gives them something to stand on and learn to perch, learn to roost. Um, and like I said, eventually they won't they won't sleep under the heat lamp, heat, whatever this thing is called. They won't sleep under it anymore. Now I am getting more chickens in today is February 23rd. Tomorrow my son goes me too. I am getting more chicks. We are the, the eggs are gonna hatch on between March 3rd and 4th. So that's next Thursday or Friday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I go away. So my sons have to keep track of them. And that will be at least four more chickens. Now we still haven't decided if we're gonna do the um we still haven't decided if we're going to do the buckeye breeding. I really, really want to. Um, but I really I have to find a I have to find a coop to put them in. Now, if I do the buckeye breeding, whatever four or five hatch that I keep, as long as I have at least one male and like four or five females, they're gonna go in that other cage that you see the school ones in. And then I'm taking some of the buckeyes to school and they'll be with them. And they can go in together. They'll be two, three weeks difference. Not a big deal, they'll be fine. They don't beat each other up. Pinchy, they're fine. Pinchy, leave them. Um, they'll be fine. Then we're getting more chicks on March 17th. I have to count my weeks. I have to see how big they are. I'm not sure if I'll be able to put those in with these guys at that time. I mean, it might not be a problem again. Um, it just depends on how friendly they are. <laughs> if they ha if they aren't, um, then I'll have to have someplace else. They'll have to go in a different cage. And I'm getting four, two, uh, two Jersey Giants, two Black and the Lucens. Um, so, the, or one Black and the Lucens two are going to school. I, this is what I do, school and work, it all combines, I'm gonna keep it all straight in my head. But anyway, so, chick feed um, is something else you need. I was doing a list, I forgot. Chick feed is something that you need. Um, you can buy the layer pellets. Mine is not medicated, it comes from, like I said, a lady that makes it. 
Um, you do medicate if you want to. My chicks were not medicated. I don't know, actually, they might be medicated. I don't remember. Um, if your chicks come medicated, you don't want medicated feed because they're already medicated. They should be good. If they don't come medicated, you can get medicated feed. You don't have to get medicated feed. All it, a lot of it does, um, and I'm not a, prof I'm not a professional, uh, Merck's disease, they medicate for that. Um, they vaccinate for that and another one. But what it does is it masks Merck's disease from what I know, which means that they can still have it, but you won't see it. So look it up figure it out what you want to do. I'm not worried about it. Um, we try to keep them on healthy food, fresh organic vegetables from the garden, um, and food made locally, uh, grown locally, um, by an actual animal nutritionist. She's an animal nutritionist. And so it's Clover Valley Farm if you're local to me in Burlington County, New Jersey. Um, and it's great. And the food is great. And all my, my big chickens are on the layer feed. These guys are on the grower feed. They'll move to the layer feed at, I think it's 16 weeks. Um, or when I run out of chick feed, they'll be fine. Uh, and that's how it goes. That's how it goes. They're so cute. Okay. So I think that's all I said. Food, heat, a place to be safe. Um, and hemp bedding is awesome. I will try to put the link below on where I ordered it online and then realized that um, Wares, one of our uh, like farm stores here, actually carries it cheaper than what I ordered it. So I know where I can go get it now. And um, it comes in 22 pound bags. You might find it in the store. I ordered it from the company and it was 44 pound bags. The price is it's like a $4 difference, but I'll take the $4 savings um, because and my coop, I have to use at least 44 pounds just to cover it the first time. And then um, I use deep, deep litter method, and so then I'm using more uh, of the 22 pound. I'll cover it again and mix it up and cover it again. Um, so, I mean, in the end, it'll be like 88 pounds I'll be pulling out of that coop in the spring to put my compost. Um, and the hemp is natural, compost, compostable, compostable. You know what I mean? So it's great. But thanks for watching. Any questions, please post them below. Um, if you are new here, uh, again, I'm Brandy, Sweeney Central. Thank you for joining us. Please subscribe to our channel, um, like and share. Uh, there's going to be a lot going on in the next forever. <laughs> the next forever. But definitely in the next year, I got a lot going on. And um, I can't wait to share it with you guys. So here are the chicks again before we get out. So that's the, uh, that is the um, stand that they have, the roost. You can actually make it uh, triple, but I don't do that. I have extra pieces up inside. I don't know, Rottweiler has a perfect view of them. Hopefully she'll be loving, caring, protecting dogs soon. Thanks for joining us. Have a blessed day.